Hello and welcome to this first edition of Symphonite TV. My name is Jens Freihöfer. And my name is Sascha Lindemann. And we would like to show you what we really have in petto with the new Symphonite 2.0. And we have lots of new features in the software we want to show you today and show you how really easy it is to commission, to control and to automate not only dynamic lighting but also functional lighting projects. Okay, but before we start, I would like to raise a question, why would someone use Symphonite 2.0? Good point, Sasha. Um, coming from the background with the LAS, with the programmer software where we did huge projects, um, we really recognize the fact that people need to be highly technical to really get into this kind of software. You know, scene-based programming, cues, automation, some macro scripting stuff is all really complex and sometimes hard for people to understand and also get back to if they haven't used it for some months or even years. So with Symphonite we want to make it much easier, much easier to get into programming, to understand what they're doing, being very visual. It is now a timeline based software and um, yeah, some things are, are really great and, and new and that's what we're going to show today. Awesome. So let's get started. All right. So now I'm going to show you the setup tab, which is used to position your fixtures in according to their actual position in the installation. And on the right hand side, you see a small guide through the software, which is uh, consisting of the setup tab, which you use to align your fixtures, the content tab to create the content, which is playing on the fixtures, and then the automation. And there are two more windows, uh, the output window and the lock window, which is more or less only for, you know, lock purposes. Uh, the setup tab is basically consisting of the devices library on the left hand side, showing all the devices we are supporting in Symphonite, all the fixtures, all the EQ controllers. The center is used to, in order to position your fixtures and the right hand side is uh, showing the properties of the fixtures or all the devices in the show. So let's get started. Um, as I said, you can arrange fixtures based on their physical location. Okay. And in order to do that, we are adding a picture to the background. And the scale is not properly done yet, so I will increase the scale by 10. Here you go. And now you see your installation. Nice. And based on this, you can just add fixtures like generic Dali ballasts All right. um, with a drag and drop to the show. So you drag the ballast and add it to the physical position. Wow, that's it. Very easy. Um, and then I'm going to do that for two rooms only because it's only about the idea of that functionality. And of course you cannot add only ballasts, you can also add light sensors next to windows, for example here, in order to support daylight harvesting features. Great. PIR sensors, so means you can support presence detection. And let's add a DALI button to turn on or off the entire installation. But of course we are not only able to uh, support functional lighting, we are also able to support uh, dynamic lighting. And in order to show that, I'm going to add a few, only a few, uh, 64 pixel boards from the Jackson colleagues. And here you are. So that's it for now. All right, great. Okay, Jens, so now we create the patch and arrange all the fixtures, um, and now we need to create content for this. How can we do that? Yes, Sasha, uh, very true. So in the second tab in the top right called content, we can see that we have a mini preview of the 3D view we know from the setup tab, really quite the same window. We can see the media library where we have all the media parts we already imported, some effects, scenes and source effects we will talk about in a few minutes, and all the properties for any item we click onto in the bottom right. But most importantly, we can see a timeline here. So um, as we said before, Symphonite is completely based on timeline programming, which should make it really intuitive to arrange any kind of item because it's timely sorted behind each other or in parallel. And in order to do this, it's um, really easy. We support a lot of drag and drop features. So you can take any of these videos we have prepared at the top right, just select it, drag and drop it onto the timeline and as I dropped it inside here, you can see a little preview of the video. 
And as soon as you hit the play button, it will be shown on this matrix in the top left corner. Okay, right. That looks pretty easy. Yes. So, so it's basically the same schematic. You have to drag an object and drop it onto the place where you would like it to have. Absolutely, it. yes. So we can use any kind of media file. If I drag and drop the media file onto this place below um, a track, then there is a small yellow line and you can drag and drop it there and it will be simply adding a new track just like this. So you have two elements. Really easy, you can arrange them, sort them in a timely manner. And once you hit play, you can see these elements replaying on the area that they are prepared for. Okay, so now both the videos fade. Yeah, it's basically a crossfade, right? Yes, it's a crossfade. So there are these small markers next to every video where you can just pull and arrange the fade out or the fade in of every element. And you can do that with pictures with videos from this media library, or you can use an effects library. We have prepared some effects inside here, but it's also really easy to create your own. So if we want to do something uh, water-like, we have this noise swimming pool called effect. We can drag and drop it to a new area and you can see it's very waterish, very water-like. We click onto that area on the timeline, push play, and you can see it's a beautiful water effect replayed on this area here of the installation. But on top of that, if you want to do any kind of scene-based programming, as you know it from the programmer software we used to do, um, you can also do that with the Scenes tab in the top right. Um, you can see here that there are different groups, for example, all DALI ballasts, all DALI inputs, all color faders, and we would like to create or edit a scene for all DALI ballasts. In order to do that, you go to the bottom left, to the scene editor, and the DALI standard offers us 16 scenes. This is now zero based, 16 scenes for all DALI ballasts that are addressed currently. We, dro we dropped four pieces inside. And you can even click onto each DALI ballast. You can see what's going on here, which one it is, and change the values by just putting in an 8-bit value or change it to percent, and you can put percent values inside. Oh, wait, and there's always a ballast blinking. Is it? Yeah, it is probably the ballast you've selected down there. So you have a direct visual link in between the sheet and the uh, fixture itself. Absolutely. It's really awesome. easy to see mm -hmm. where you put uh, which value on which ballast or with which ballast you're currently working with. And that's basically the content program. Great. Okay, Sasha, so I think we're kind of done with the small example for the content programming. So how do we actually automate this to do something like a timed automation or automating the different DALI elements? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's quite easy we have to go to the automation tab. And here we have the so-called workflow designer, mm -hmm. which we are using in order to automate things. Mm -hmm. uh, on the left-hand side of the um, GUI, you have the, all the blocks, all the content of the show, all the DALI ballast, all the PIR sensors, and also the timelines we just created. Mm -hmm. And here you have the workspace, where you actually connect all the blocks. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And here you're having all the properties of the blocks. So as soon as you select an item on the page, then you see the properties here. Mm -hmm. Okay, for the time being, I'm just uh, creating a simple show, I would say, with a time trigger, um, starting the show at 7 a.m. in the morning and mm -hmm. stopping the show in the evening. Okay. So in order to do that, we have to add a time trigger to the workspace. And this is basically following the same philosophy as in the entire simple light program. Straying an object and dropping it onto the area of, or the work area. Mm -hmm. So here we are having the time trigger with an enabled setting and a trigger. So as soon as the time trigger is reached, it will fire a trigger event. I will show you how to use that in a minute. But for now we are creating the trigger and this is done here. So I would like to have a trigger weekdays, so it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. And I would like to start the show at 7 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that's it for now. And now I want to start the, uh, the timeline you just created. And for this I add the sequence basic block to the show. And this one is showing some basic properties like the opacity 
and all the start, pause, resume, stop and finish the events. Mm -hmm. So, and the only thing I have to do for now is drag and drop an arrow from the trigger to the start. Wow, very so easy. So every weekday at 7 a.m. a trigger is sent to the start of Great. the sequence basic block. And in order to stop the show in the evening, I'm just going to add another time trigger. I will save the configuration of this trigger for now and wow. connect it to the stop of the sequence basic. That's it. And if you want to connect the DALI PIR sensors, for example, to the DALI ballast, then you add the DALI PIR sensor with a motion start and a motion end. Mm -hmm. So basically motion start is whenever someone approaches the sensor, uh, means if any movement is in front of the sensor, this mm -hmm. event will be fired. And after a certain delay, which you can uh, configure here, the motion end event will be fired. Great, okay. And then you just add the DALI block to here and connect the motion start to, for example, recall last scene, mm -hmm. last active light level, if someone approaches the sensor, and then you just connect the motion end to off, for example. Mm -hmm. That means someone is front of the sensor, turn on the lights, turn on the lights, sorry, and if someone leaves the area of the sensor, then turn off the lights. And I can do as many triggers, operators, conditions as I want, right? Exactly. And you can, of course, also create different tasks. So okay, great. If your you know, routine is too complex to put it in one tab, just add a new one. Okay. It's like a new, yeah, new workspace. Every exactly, time, right? Exactly. It's basically similar to Excel. Okay, great. Okay, Sasha. So now let's assume we're done with programming our show. We did the content, the setup before that, and now the automation triggers. So how can I actually control this with something like my cool new iPhone or tablet or whatever? Okay, that's uh, very easy too. So for that use case, we have to go to the GUI editor. Mm -hmm. It's also included in the automation. And here you can configure pages for web um, or web pages for mobile devices, mm -hmm. for example. So actually, what you see here is the mobile uh, page that's going to be displayed on your device. Okay. And you can add buttons to this uh, page. And as soon as you host this device in a web browser, like we do here, it's accessible. Great. So if you load that page on your mobile device, you can control the installation. And I can do that also with a QR code I can see in the bottom left. Exactly. Right? If you scan this code, you have access to this page. Okay. And now, as soon as I added this button to the GUI editor, I can drag and drop the device onto here, for example. Or let's put it here. And now I can connect the press action, for example, with the start sequence. Okay. And that's it. So it's basically following the same philosophy. Very cool. Uh, what other elements do we have on the GUI editor? There are many other elements. Mm -hmm. For example, I can add images. Mm -hmm. I can add text labels. I can add faders and color pickers in different oh. shapes. Nice. And we are having a so-called inline frame, which is used to show other web pages. Okay, great. We could use it to in integrate uh, webcams mm -hmm. or weather forecasts into your action pad. Okay, wow. Looks very nice and easy to do. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the end for now. Um, thank you for watching the first episode of Simple ITV and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.